there and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. So we are going to be doing a big breakdown of the new makeup brand Auric. So Auric Beauty was founded by Samantha Ravendahl. She has been a content creator on YouTube for a long time. She used to be a makeup artist. Her brand just launched with two products, a liquid highlighter called Glowless and a cream powder eyeshadow duo called Smoke Reflect. So the way that this is gonna go down is first, I'm gonna talk about the ingredients in the product and then give my review of it. Once we get through all three products, I'll talk a little bit about the brand's claims and my thoughts on them. So first, let's talk about the Glowless product. This is the liquid highlighter and it comes in seven different shades for various skin tones. So the first category of ingredients we'll talk about is emollient. The highest concentration of emollient, which is right after water, is hydrogenated didesine. And this is a very lightweight emollient. This is going to give a very smooth feeling across the skin, and its weight is about 80% of that of water. And this is known to be non oily, so it's not going to leave you looking greasy or dewy if that is something you're going for. And there's also squalene, which is going to mimic the natural components of your skin, as well as polydesine, which is also an emollient. The next ingredient in here is mica. So this mica is what is going to give you that glow. You can mill down mica very finely, and by milling it down finely, that means that the surface area is a lot smaller and it will be less reflective. So that's why you can still have mica in matte eyeshadows. But in this case, the particle size would be bigger in order to yield a more glow effect. One potential issue with mica is the issue of child labor. And that is a reason why some people do choose to avoid mica altogether in their products. I'm not someone of the mindset who just thinks we should ban mica. Uh, beauty is a very small sector of the industries that use mica. For instance, cars use a lot more for their paint. Toys also could use mica. And secondly, to just avoid using mica altogether cuts off a primary resource of providing for the families in these areas. I'll put a video in the cards where I talk more about the mica industry and how it pertains to the beauty community at large, but there are groups involved that brands are aligning themselves with in order to source mica in a more ethical way. But I bring up this issue because one of the frequently asked questions was, is the mica conflict free? And they do claim that this is what is referred to as DRC conflict free. Now, I am not very familiar with this term, but from a source I found, it says in the DEC rule, DRC conflict free is defined as minerals that were extracted, this is a mineral, and did not directly or indirectly benefit armed groups in the covered countries. So I'm not sure if that claim covers the child labor aspect. I would really love for them to provide more information about what DRC conflict free means. So back to ingredient functions. Now we're going to talk about humectants. So humectants are really good at attracting water. This helps hydrate the skin. And these are great not only in skincare products, but also things like primers, this liquid luminizer that you may put under your makeup as well, because by this helping to add hydration to your skin, makeup isn't just going to stick to your skin. That happens a lot with foundations that don't have a lot of humectants. If your skin's not properly hydrated and moisturized, sometimes you will have that foundation stick to dry patches. So for them to be in here is very beneficial. So that being said, this is different than a lot of other liquid highlighters like this. Usually liquid highlighters have a much higher concentration of glycerin, propendiol, butylene glycol. These humectants kind of give a glossy look to the skin because they are attracting water. They're not evaporating. This one seems to not have as much of those in there. So while these are adding hydration to the skin, they aren't giving you that dewy look to the skin that you would find in other products that would have these in higher concentration. So this next ingredient is important and that is Cetyl PEG PPG-10 1 dimethicone. So this is going to be the emulsifier in this. Basic chemistry will tell you oil and water don't mix. This has to do with the charges on different ends of the molecule. Without an emulsifier, these would just be in two separate layers and your product would never properly mix. Emulsifiers work because one end has a polar charge and the other end is nonpolar, so it can actually attract to both types of molecules. 
and appropriate emulsifiers are necessary in products to help maintain the integrity and for them not to separate into layers. Now we move on to film formers. In this case, you have hydrogenated styrene, isoprene copolymer, cetyl dimethicone slash bis bisvinyl dimethicone cross polymer. So they aren't super high on this list, which is good because if you have film formers too high on the list, sometimes it's really difficult to apply things on top of it. You find this a lot in waterproof sunscreens, long wear foundations if you ever had problems applying creams on top. By film formers not being in super high concentration in this formula, that's gonna allow you to be able to wear this under your makeup and depending on the foundation on top of your makeup as well. It makes it able to play nicely with other products. So another ingredient in here that's very common in a lot of things is capric caprylic triglyceride. This is also an emollient that helps with skin feel, but a lot of times with the raw materials that are going into cosmetics, you're not adding this ingredient, this ingredient, this ingredient. Think of it almost like a cake mix. For instance, a cake mix is gonna have your flour, your sugar, all of that stuff and you just mix it with a couple other ingredients and that's gonna blend it up and make and help you make a cake. In the case of cosmetics, sometimes you will have a preservative blend, you'll have a base blend for a lipstick or you'll have a base blend that's the primary ingredients in your formula. But in this case, together, this capric caprylic triglyceride is actually mixed with another ingredient, which is the Hoya Lacunosa flower extract. And there seems to be only one supplier of this particular extract. Based on the information from the supplier's website, it seems this is supposed to help give an illuminated look to the skin. So this flower came out of Asia. This has been used in traditional Chinese medicine from what they are saying for the anti-inflammatory benefits. The Hoya flower is mainly composed of actives that are supposed to be known for their protective benefit. And this extract can be used up to 10% in illuminating skincare or makeup with illuminating benefits such as BB cream. So in terms of skincare benefits, as they mentioned, I don't think it's gonna contribute much to this formula. Possibly it's contributing to illuminating aesthetics of the formula altogether. So now, my thoughts on this product. The packaging, she's already mentioned this, the lid when I first got it was almost impossible to take off but over time it was a lot easier. That's just something I wanna mention. A little goes a long way with this product. I, when I used this the first time, I used three pumps and I was shiny like a light bulb. Typically, and now I only use one pump. It does give a very nice glow under the skin. I'm wearing this today, and I even did like it wearing it by itself. The best way I have found to apply this is either using a sponge, or what I've been re using recently is like, a is like a kabuki brush to blend it out, like one you would use to blend out foundation. So as I mentioned earlier, this doesn't seem to have a lot of humectants in here, which is very different than a lot of liquid illuminizers, which are very humectant heavy. Illuminators I've used in the past that have been very humectant heavy, I've been very easily able to apply them to my face with my hands, and it kind of gets absorbed by the skin very easily. That is not the case with this one. This will sit on top of the skin if you try to use your hand. So I do enjoy this product. I like to wear it under foundation. I feel like I can wear it on its own for just a little bit more glow. I feel like it is a very versatile product. That being said, it is also very subtle. So if you like really full coverage foundation, you might have to use a lot. Like I said, I, I only use one pump, but most of my foundations are more medium coverage to get that glow. And on top of the skin, it also gives a subtle glow. So if you like a blinding highlight, this is not gonna be the one for you. I can wear this on a day-to-day -day basis and not have it be too much, but I can also add a little bit more if I want a little bit extra oomph. So now let's break down the ingredients in the I do. So if I bought the shade Temper, which is more of the rose gold shade. We're gonna start with the powder. The thing with talking about powder ingredients is I can break down the functions and what they do. There's also other aspects to the formula. For instance, we discussed mica. Mica can be used matte and shimmer shadows depending on how big the particle size is. So that's something to consider. 
There's also how it's pressed, which is going to be a factor when I review it. To start off with, we're going to talk about colorants. This does not utilize vegan colorants. It has a carmine in it, which is a red color. And the reason why it's not vegan is because it's derived from a certain kind of beetle. The other two smoke reflex do not have carmine in them, so I believe that those two are vegan. But I do actually appreciate, since this is an eyeshadow duo, that they do use carmine in here and not some other red colorant. So in the US, the FDA is very strict about colorants and products these colorants can be used in. Most red colorants are not permitted for use in eye products because they can irritate the skin. A lot of people think it's staining, but it's actually more because of irritation and people do experience irritation. So if a product is gonna be labeled as for eye use, it cannot have these colorants in there. I have another video where I went farther into depth about this, so I will link that as well. So I'm glad that they actually followed this rule because now a lot of brands kind of try to bend the rule and say the product's not for eye use, but then use it as an eyeshadow in all of their marketing. So the two base ingredients are what's gonna be giving this a sparkle. So first of all, you have mica. So you can mill down mica to a certain particle size and based on that particle size, it'll give you reflective properties and shimmer shadows or you can have more of a matte shadow. In this case, it's probably larger because this is a shimmer eyeshadow. Another ingredient is calcium sodium borosilicate. So this is a glass-like material. Again, milled down finely enough so it's safe for your eyes, but this will also have reflective properties. But this is a very common ingredient in a lot of very shimmery eyeshadows because it gives such good reflective properties. So now you have dimethicone and octododecyl sterile stearate. So these are going to help it spread across the skin. The octododecyl sterile stearate is also going to act as a binder to help it stick together in the pan and on your eyelid. Another ingredient is polyethylene terra phthalate. So this is a plastic-like material and this will be used with things like colorants to act as a glitter. And this next ingredient I'm going to talk on purely because I've been asked about this before. And that is polytetrafluoroethylene. So when people look this up, this is the chemical name for Teflon. And sometimes this brings concern to people because Teflon can be carcinogenic, but only if it's heated up to a high enough amount. And that temperature I believe is somewhere around 570 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a very high heat. Now to ease your concerns, even the American Cancer Society doesn't believe this to be a concern when it's used in cookware, let alone in your cosmetics. Never get up to that heat in cosmetics to cause a concern. So personally, I am not concerned about this being in my cosmetics because my cosmetics will never be heated up enough where it would be at risk of breaking down at that temperature to become carcinogenic. This also brings up the point is a lot of people like to use the argument, well, it's used in X, so why would you want to use it in cosmetics? In fact, we should be very impressed that an ingredient can be so multifunctional that it can be used over a variety of industries. That is how I look at things. But in the case of cosmetics, this ingredient is used because it helps to give a very smooth feeling to the skin. Before we get into the cream and ingredients, I'm going to give you my review on the powder. This powder seems very, very hard pressed in there. When I use a brush, I don't feel like I pick up some things, but I don't feel like I pick up that much. Even after wetting the brush once I've put it into the pan, it still doesn't seem to apply that much onto my actual eyelid. The best way I found is to actually use my finger and that's how I seem to get the most payoff from it. And I'm not sure if it was intentionally this way, but it's not a very pigment heavy shadow. Now, I don't take that as a bad thing in this case. It almost functions more like a pressed glitter. I don't wanna call it a pressed glitter because it's not chunky like a glitter, but the particles that you are getting are definitely more glittery looking than they are pigmented. It reminds me a lot of a shadow I have from the Dose of Colors Desi X Katie palette. I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison here. So as you can see, they do give a very shimmery effect, but it's really hard to see any sort of color. I don't know if it's just this shadow. This is just my experience with the temper eyeshadow. Maybe the other ones perform differently, but this is my experience with this particular shadow. This isn't necessarily a negative. I do like this because I can get that shimmery effect. I like the effect that it puts on my eyelid and I can kind of manipulate it with other eyeshadows to get that look that I want. Sometimes when there's too much pigment in these kind of shadows, 
I find them to be kind of creasy. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if you're someone who wanted that particular color to be extremely pigmented, that's why I wanted to throw this out there for you. If there is an overspray, I haven't gotten through it over multiple times of using this product. So now for the cream shadow ingredient. So the first ingredient is cyclopentasiloxane. Cyclopentasiloxane is a volatile silicone. By this being in there, it helps it spread across your skin and then evaporate quickly. You'll find this a lot in foundations. If you buy this iDuo, please keep the nice little insert they have on the top of it on there. This will prevent it from drying out. I hope that by doing this, this will help keep the integrity of this cream shadow longer over time because cyclopentasiloxane does evaporate rather quickly. So the next ingredient, HDI trimethyl hexyl actone cross polymer. So this is going to have good slip to it. This will also help it blend out easily over the skin. And this also doesn't leave a tacky finish. This is very beneficial in a product such as this that's going on the eyes where you have a lot of folds on there, or at least if you're me, you do. And this will hopefully help it not crease because it's not tacky so it won't stick. The next ingredient is diphenyl siloxate, phenyl trimethicone, and it, this will give a nice shine to the product. So for this cream shadow, this will help it have a nice shine without being glittery. This product I've really, really enjoyed. This is definitely more subtle of a cream shadow. It blends out very, very easily, and it does dry down fairly quickly. I didn't notice any creasing when I've worn this to work throughout the day. It seems to stay in place pretty well. Like I mentioned I hope that this product doesn't evaporate too quickly and get a weird texture to it over time I'll just have to see how that plays out powder does apply very nicely on top of this and the color is definitely more subtle again I cannot speak to the other colors in this line but the temper color is definitely very subtle I that's what I am wearing today so now we're gonna look into the claims of this brand so the first claim is that they are paraben free this is pretty common of almost every product I feel now. I don't inherently think they're bad, but we're not going to go too far into that. Again, we'll have link another video. That's the theme of this video is go watch my other videos where I talk about where I deep dive on things I mentioned in this video. So the next claim is that it's gluten free. I don't believe there are many cosmetic ingredients that contain gluten, but I also don't know if being gluten free is very is very important to most people who have things like celiac disease. Possibly if it's a lip product because you might ingest it, but with these products, I'm not very convinced that that's an important aspect of the products. If you have more info on that, please let me know. The next, the next phrase they use is no animal testing. And I like that they use this term instead of cruelty free because cruelty free gets misinterpreted to mean a lot of other things other than that no animal testing was performed. And to learn more about cruelty free, I will link a video from Jen Loves, finally one that's not my video, and petrolatum free. So I don't have a video on this one, but to briefly give you a synopsis of how I feel about it, there is not really a health risk that I can find. It is not inherently unsafe. In fact, it actually works as a skin protectant and it's not known to clog pores despite what some of the information on the internet says. A lot of valid concern is that because it's derived from oil, it may not be necessarily good for the environment. So in terms of environmentally, I don't mind this being in my product solely because this is a byproduct of the oil industry. This byproduct is gonna exist whether or not the entire cosmetic industry ceases to use it. Obviously in the future, as we move away from using oil and there is less of this byproduct available, then we can look to find other things that function similarly, but it seems wasteful to not use a byproduct that is already in the environment, if that makes sense. So another thing they mention is using ingredients that are good for your skin. So one thing is that we always create complexion products that do more than just sit on your face. Our Glowless Luminizer contains squalene, glycerin, porcelain, flour, and other oils to hydrate and care for your skin while you wear it. This is a very common thing now, is to say makeup it has skincare benefits, and while glycerin and squalene are definitely beneficial for your skin, I, I'm not convinced at this point on the porcelain flower extract, especially in the concentration in this formula. Although this is a very common tactic of brands, it's not just this brand, a lot of brands do this with foundations and whatnot too. Um, as a customer, 
I wouldn't give a lot of weight to this. So now to summarize my feelings on this brand as a whole. It is very expensive. It is considered a luxury brand. I will give you that. Would I have bought this brand if it wasn't founded by Samantha Ravindahl? Probably not. I've been a very big fan of hers for a very long time and inherently now a lot of the makeup products that I am buying if it's not replacing things I commonly use like a face powder or a concealer, if it's something like the luminizer, an eyeshadow palette, anything like that, it's usually from an influencer brand that I want to try out because otherwise I'm not really spending a whole lot of extra money on cosmetics these days. Were these products worth the money? So the way that I am going to define that is, I do not regret the money that I have spent on these products. I like these products. I like the liquid highlighter. It works really nice under my makeup. I like wearing a little bit of it alone. And I like the colors of the eyeshadow duo and the finishes that they provide on my skin and how all of these products wear throughout the day. So for me, it was worth it. If you've learned something today, give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you can learn more about the science of makeup and skincare. And let me know down below if you've tried this brand, what other brands I should look into. And with that, I will see you in my next video.